اوكي بسم الله السلام عليكم ورحمه الله تعالى وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ثم ما بعد Welcome back to the second session on this new series the signs of the hour the signs of the day of judgment علامات الساعه واشراطها Now uh, last week when we discussed علامات الساعه we talked about the first step to the hereafter and we mentioned that the first step to the hereafter is still in this world and that is the event the event of death itself Okay So uh, the event of death, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Qur'an and the Prophet sallallahu mentioned the hadith that uh, it is the first step to the hereafter. And whoever is saved and rescued in that phase, everything will be easier afterwards. And anyone who's become in trouble in that phase, so everything afterwards will become actually difficult. Then comes as sa'a. Now death is the sa'a, which means it's the hour for every individual. Death is the hour for every individual. However, however, collectively, Collective. So basically, whoever dies, their sa'a or their qiyamah has just established and started. But for those who don't die during basically that, that until the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the order for the establishment of the day of judgment, how can they know that the hour is coming closer and closer and closer? And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala named it as sa'a. Allah azza wa jal mentioned about the sa'a or the hour. He says, Inna sa'ata la atiyatun la rayba fiha walakinna akthar al nasi la yu'minun. إن الساعة لا آتية لا ريب فيها ولكن أكثر الناس لا يؤمنون. Indeed, Allah says the hour is coming. No doubt about it. Means even if people are doubting it, Allah says that He is challenging them. Says that the hour is coming. No doubt about it. But most of the people do not believe. Most of the people do not believe. And what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala also says says وما أكثر وما أكثر الناس ولو حرصت بمؤمنين. Not most of the people you'll find them, even if you try, will be of those who are thankful and grateful to Allah Azza wa Jal. So few people will be the grateful ones, but most people, unfortunately, will be uh, among uh, the ungrateful. So basically, the, the unbelievers over here. Now, why is it so important for us? It is so important for us to believe on the, in the Day of Judgment and the hour because it is one of the six articles of faith. I hope that you guys still remember the six articles of faith, right? And this is something that you need to memorize, just like memorizing Surah Al-Fatiha. So let's see if we still remember these six articles of faith. So what are these six articles of faith? Number one, to believe in what? Allah. In Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To believe in Allah and only one Allah azza wa jal. Number two, to believe in? Prophet. To believe in the angels. Al-Malaika. Number three, to believe in the Anbiya. And number four, the books that were sent with them. And number five, to believe in? As-sa'a, the day of judgment, the hour. And number six is Al-Qada, Al-Qada wa Al-Qadr. To believe in Qada wa Al-Qadr, that's the divine predestination from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are the six articles of faith, and as we see, it's one of them. And when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he received Jibreel, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam received Jibreel alayhi wa sallam, and Allah azza wa jal, Uh, uh, asked him to test the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or at least to kind of like educate the community at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One of the questions that he, one of the question he received, he, one of the questions that he received from uh, uh, Jibril uh, about as sa what are, what are these, what, are, what is, what are these basically as sa what does it mean exactly? And uh, the Prophet himself, he couldn't give the answer to Jibril. He says, مَلْ مَسْؤُولُ عَنْهَا بِيَعْلَمْ مِنَ السَّالِ means me and you, we don't have the answer to this. But it is one of these one of these items and articles of faith, and as a believer, you are obligated to believe on the day of judgment. Now, uh, uh, a question: Why was the final day called as sa Okay, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in the Quran named Yawm al Qiyamah in different terms, called Yawm al Qiyamah, Yawm al Din, and other names. And one of them was as sa the hour. So, why was it called the hour? Do you guys have any idea, any indication why was it called the hour? Anybody? Imagine the Day of Judgment. I want you to give that visual image of the Day of Judgment. How is it going to be established? How is it going to be established? And then, and then how would this be related to the uh, idea of called it as as sa the hour? It's, too soon. Huh? It's coming very soon. Like in the Arabic language, sometimes we say, if someone asks you, when are you going to do this to, for me? So you ask someone to do something for you. And they say, okay, so when is it going to happen? What do they say? They say, as sa Means as I'll do it for you, which means right now, something that's going to happen in two, very soon. It's going to happen very, very soon. That's what they mean when they say as 
others for you. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala named it as sa it's basically because it's too soon or very soon. It's going to happen very soon. What else? What do you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala named Yawm al-Qiyamah as sa the hour? What could be the reason for that? Yes? Out of all of the times, it's the most critical one. It's one of the most critical ones? So like saying of all of the time that we have, all the hours that you live in your life, this will be the most critical one. So like of all the time that you have, this is one particular time, maybe unidentified, and it's the most critical for you to keep and keep track of and keep remembering. What could be other reasons for calling it or naming it as Sa'a? Yes? The hour of the justice. The hour of justice, the establishment of justice. Yeah, it could be one of them. What else? Any other opinions? Yes? Any time that is coming soon. So basically still coming soon, something that's coming soon. As sa'at, the hour that will be coming very soon. Let's see what the ulama said about this. There are many, many interpretations. Nothing from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu So there is no textual evidence to suggest that this is the exact meaning of as sa'at or why was it called as sa'at, the hour. But this is interpretation from some of the ulama. Number one, they say, because as, when you say as sa'at, it's the unknown period of time. So when you talk about something is coming, say, so, Sa'a min nahar, sa'ata min nahar, some, an hour of the day, or that particular hour, when, where, you don't even know. And that's what, this is one of the, this is one of the signs of the Day of Judgment, or at least one of the characteristics of the of Day of Judgment. That it is happening, but we don't know where, where is it going to happen. So it's just basically like an unknown period of time that is going to be happening and taking place. The second opinion, say so because it is considered the last hour in the life of this world. This world, like saying, you know, you lived for thousands, humanity lived for thousands of years, and now what is left is what? Asa, one hour. So that hour, which is the last hour of, you know, the entire yeah, life of, the, of this world. And that is exactly whenever you, you do a program, or for example, if you've been participating in an activity that's timed, uh, and then the, the, start, the countdown start. So what's the significance of having it in an hour or 10 hours or one day? It doesn't really matter much, as much as the last perhaps few minutes. And if it was days, perhaps would be the last hour will be the most important time of the entire program and entire activity. And that's exactly the same thing when it comes to this dunya, the life of this world. So you're talking about hundreds of years, thousands of years, thousands and thousands of years. But then, when, which part of those thousands of years is the most significant? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, as sa that particular time, which is the last sa'a, the last hour when they come to the countdown. The third opinion, they say, it is the first hour in the life of the hereafter. Now, it's not because it's the end of this life, or this world. No, it's because it's the beginning of the hereafter. So Allah says about as sa which means the beginning of a new era, a new age, not just age, a new, completely a new life. And what life is that? That's the life of the hereafter. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called it as sa That sa the beginning of completely a new life and dimension of life. And number four, the Prophet, Allah, the ulama, they say actually, because it, you're talking about the moment. You know, sometimes, because it's sudden, uh, you just say as sa It's just like, saying, like you're saying the moment. Remember? You remember what's going to happen? You would say, what is it exactly? So you remember that sa that moment? Like saying the moment. And of course, when you compare an hour, an hour, or the word term hour itself to uh, hundreds of hours, that hour becomes in this huge kind of space of time would be what? Would be insignificant. It would be like saying the moment. So that hour is actually a moment in the actual time of yeah, the, the mankind and even the creation uh, of mankind, even the earth and the heavens and so on. And the last, one of the last opinions as well, they said that for, because of its swiftness, because of swiftness. It's so swift, so quick, and that's why it was called as sa Again, when you compare the sa the hour, comparing it to the, uh, uh, the great actual length of the time that humanity lived on this earth, it would be considered like a moment, very swift and very quickly, and it's very sudden, you can't even actually even, even remember it. So these are some of the opinions, not on, the only opinions, some of the opinions that the ulama, they say, would be actually the meaning of the hour, as sa now the signs, Ashratu sa Okay, so we know that this is going to be a moment. It's going to be an event that will happen at the end of, uh, of, of this life. So uh, how do we recognize that? Alhamdulillah, one of the na'am of Allah Azza wa Jalla, the blessings of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala upon us, that if Allah Azza wa Jalla, if Allah's will 
to keep you alive until you attend that day, which is it's really, really and horrific events. If you talk, if you read the Surah al uh, takwir by itself, you will realize that the horrific events that will happen concerning the stars and the heavens and the earth and the planets and the sun and the moon and everything, everything. So it's going to be very terrifying. But if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will that you live until you attend that, sometimes you need like some sort of like a, a heads up, an indication. And these are what we call them ashrat al sa'a or alamat al sa'a. Alamat as sa'a. What's the definition of Ashrat as sa'a or the science of the day of judgment, the science of the hour? Uh, there wasn't any specific definition for, uh, you know, in, in books of, of Aqidah uh, that the ulama they, they put together, but some of the ulama they made their ishtihads, like Imam Ibn Hajar, Ta'ala, Al Bayhaqi, and, and, and others, and they all are, go around the same theme. They say, here Al Alamat, Ashrat as sa'a, Al Alamat Lati Tasbiqu Yawm Al Qiyama, Wa Tadullu Ala Qurbi Qudumiha. Al Alamat, which means the events. These are the signs, the indications that occur prior to the establishment of the hour, means the day of judgment, as an indication to its imminent arrival, means that the very proximate you know, arrival of that hour and that day. So they all agree these are events, these are indications. Indications in the events, signs, uh, things that would happen that would occur prior to the establishment of the day of judgment or the hour. But we're going to see there so will be some sort of like a kind of like a, a paradox in terms of what does it mean when we say close to the arrival of that day when we have a very long time between then and between now and then. But eventually there are considered indications, signs that will give us a prediction some the day of judgment will be established. Now the name as sa was mentioned in the Quran over 37 times. Just the word as was mentioned in many, many ayat more than 37 times, or around 37 times. One of these examples, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَنَّ السَّاعَةَ آتِيَةٌ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهَا وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ يَبْعَثُ مَنْ فِي الْقُبُورِ وَأَنَّ السَّاعَةَ آتِيَةٌ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهَا وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ يَبْعَثُ مَنْ فِي الْقُبُورِ And that they may know that the hour is coming. No doubt about it. And that Allah will resurrect those in the graves. Means that even if they deny it, even if they reject it, if they, even if they don't believe in it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall bring them back. So that the, the hour will, is coming, there is no doubt about it, and everybody will, be come, will come out from their graves. So even if they deny it, they're still going to be resurrected. <clears throat> now, question, how close is a sa'a? How close is the hour? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in, in, in few ayat in the Quran, but it's extremely close. He says, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, اقتربت الساعة وانشق القمر. اقتربت الساعة وانشق القمر. The hour has come near and the moon has split in two. And we're going to explain that, inshallah ta'ala, when we talk about the, the actual signs that happened during the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah says here, اقتربت الساعة. اقتربت means it's coming near. It's coming near, very near. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in, uh, in Surah Al-Ahzab, People ask you regarding or concerning the hour. Say knowledge of it is only with Allah. And what, what, what may you, uh, make you perceive, perhaps the hour is near. Means what do you know about it? Maybe it's very near. So Allah Azza in this ayah as if he's threatening the people. Even when you ask the question, you might, even have, you might not even have t enough time to give an answer. That's what it means. Maybe it's very, very, very near and very close to you. So that's the indication. Perhaps it's very, very near. But the question is, how near, how close a sa'a is? Has any of the ulama, our ulama, our Muslim scholars, have they ever tried to put a calculation on when the Day of Judgment will happen? Now in Christianity, in Christianity, there have been multiple attempts, not once, not twice, many, many, many attempts from uh, uh, some, you know, clergy and some churches sometimes, they would give an indication that the Day of Judgment is happening and not just happening, they, as a matter of fact, they even give an actual date. So the, le the latest was actually something that was very recent. So they would say that on that day, in that, in that hour, the Day of Judgment will be established. And guess what? Nothing happened. Remember when the, at the time of the first the new millennium, what people were talking about? Everybody was going out saying, Jesus is coming and that's it and you're doomed. You have to have faith, believe and this and that, repent. Everybody was just like, it's over. It's just, for them, it's like for, for real. 
but then nothing happened. So did our ulama, Muslim scholars, have they ever tried doing that as well? Now we know, contemporary speaking, in the contemporary time, there have been multiple attempts from so-called, you know, uh, not necessarily scholars, but Muslim, you know, philosophers, thinkers, activists, and so on, trying to make their own indications about the Day of Judgment. So some of them, they use numbers of the Qur'an. Some of them, they use the repetition of the letters, alif, lam, mim, ha, mim, and so on, the Qur'an. So they have some sort of, you know, kind of criteria by which they try to make a, a specific calculation to bring uh, somehow as close as possible, as, as accurate as possible to the day of the, the, the actual date of the Day of Judgment. But the ulama, the early scholars, have they ever tried that? Well, actually, I tried to look into the, uh, uh, some, the books of some of the ulama from the past. And one of them was Imam al-Suyuti, rahimahullah ta'ala. He has a book, actually, two books on the subject of the Day of Judgment. And one of them was supposed to be an Ashrat al-Sa'a, Alamat al-Sa'a, but he was not able to fulfill that. But eventually, in one of his books, rahimahullah ta'ala, he predicted that the Day of Judgment would most likely be, will be uh, uh, at the beginning of the 15th century. Which 15th century is that we're talking about? Hijri century. Which century is that, Jama'a? Ours. Now we live in the 15th century. This year is 1434. So for him, and he lived about 300 years ago, or actually more than 300 years ago almost, and he predicted that it's going to be established around that time. But was that right or wrong? wrong. Absolutely wrong. Wrong in many ways. Wrong in even trying to establish a specific date for it. Uh, to begin with. Uh, and second, alhamdulillah, well, look, we're still alive, right? Nothing happened yet. But what, what kind of provoked these ulama to make these, these decisions, at least these you know, attempts to try to predict the Day of Judgment? What would it be? The signs that they see during their time. The signs that they see during their times. So at the time of Imam al rahimahullah ta'ala, there were so many signs, according to their time, there are signs of the Day of Judgment, particularly the fitna. And the Muslim ummahs going down, the non-Muslim uh, nations going up, and the, so there were a lot of fitna were going on. The ilm was kind of going almost like a, to a dead, dead end. And he himself, Imam al-Suyut, rahimahullah ta'ala, he had an attempt to kind of, you know, get himself to the level of mujtahid. And he was, as a matter of fact, a level, at the level of mujtahid, rahimahullah ta'ala. But some scholars of his time, they, they actually denied him the right to be a mujtahid, and they even they wrote book against him. That how could he, how dare he claim so to be a mujtahid and so on. So eventually there were so many signs, according to Imam bin Surat rahimahullah, indicate that the, the hour is near and it's very, very, very close. That's why perhaps he said, you know what? If that's where he was living, rahimahullah, two, three hundred years ago, that means in another one hundred years, that means the Day of Judgment will be established for sure. Now, we live in the 15th, 15th century, based on the signs that we see today. Before we go into the details of these signs, but some of them, you see that the that lofty buildings, the, the, the absence of ilm, the ulama who die and there is no replacement, and all these signs, and also the ummah is divided. So you can see all these signs. Based on that, what would you predict, guys? What would you say would be the, the, the time when the, the, uh, this will happen? Some of us might say it's actually maybe tomorrow. Or maybe maybe in one or two decades, based on what we see. So that's why perhaps some of the ulama, like the Sutra, rahimahullah ta'ala, tried or at least he says, could be around the 15th century. He's not saying that this is the day. He was saying, if things continue the way they are, according to his time, during his time, that means the day of judgment, the hour, most likely will be established around or the beginning of the 15th century. So that was an attempt, of course, but of course we don't believe in these kind of you know, attempts. And Allah Azza wa answered this in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-A'raf, يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ السَّاعَةِ أَيَّانَ مُرْسَاهَا and they ask you, O oh Muhammad, about the hour, when is, it, uh, uh, when, uh, is its arrival? So when is it going to come? قُلْ إِنَّمَا عِلْمُهَا عِنْدَ رَبِّي لَا يُجَلِّيهَا لِوَقْتِهَا إِلَّهُ Say its knowledge is only with my Lord, none will reveal its, uh, uh, its time except Him. Means no one would have that time except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ثَقُلَتْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ لَا تَأْتِيكُمْ إِلَّا بَغْتَ It lays heavily upon the heavens and the earth and will not come upon, upon you except, except suddenly, unexpectedly. And then he said, يَسْأَلُونَكَ كَأَنَّكَ حَفِيٌّ عَنْهَا And when they ask you, as if you were familiar with it. I mean, they ask you like they think that you really know. Because he was the messenger of Allah. So people, they would think he should know, right? And Allah says, no. قُلْ إِنَّمَا عِلْمُهَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ Say that the knowledge, its knowledge is only with Allah. But most of the people do not know. 
So regardless how much people today, even the 21st century, the 15th century century, they try to use mathematics, computers, whatever, you know, high speed processors to try to find out the time for the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this one of the, one of the ulum al ghaib that no one would have access to except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and only Allah azza wa jal. However, if Allah says that it's very near, and it's very close, and it's all, already close, اقتربت الساعة Allah says, that means the hour is near. So how is it so near to us when almost a, a, one and a half millennium passed from the time of the Prophet and it's still not here? So how, how, what are we talking about when Allah says اقتربت الساعة, the ساعة is near. And لَعَلَّهَا تَكُونُ قريبة. Perhaps it was going to be coming very, very soon. So what is the, mean, the meaning of the word soon? And it's near. What exactly means right now? Again, if you took at those words uh, 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 near and soon from that perspective, from the lingu linguistic perspective, and you think that it, it's going to be soon and near, that means anytime soon, that not basically kind of become a paradox over here. Because 1,500 years since then, nothing happened to say that it started. But when we look at these 1500 years again, uh, in comparison to that time and the age of humanity and the life on, on, in heavens and the earth, that means it's, it's going to be really soon. Those are nothing. These are just like indeed like hours compared to all of this. So they're going to be like hours. And that is the feeling of humans when they go to the Day of Judgment. When they go to the Day of Judgment, even if they lived for 70 years, 60 years more or less, and when they were asked, how long they spend on earth, what would they say? Sa'atan min nahar. We only spend one hour of the day, that's all. That's all our life that was in, in dunya. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the best, of course. He gave them 60 years, 70 years, more or less. But they don't see that because again, the time was nothing compared now to the eternity. When you talk about eternity in the akhirah, that whole life on earth would be completely insignificant and nothing. So the meaning of saying that it's actually close, can, it's relative to the actual whole time of, on, uh, of the life of basically of, of, يعني, and on earth and the heavens as well. Now the signs are here. So since even, even has been almost 1,500 years since the top of Prophet and brought this message to us, and even the Anbiya from before him also, they uh, kind of uh, uh, encourage people to prepare for the Day of Judgment. So we know for sure that the signs of the Day of Judgment are actually here. They are. They are here. Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned that in the Quran, قَالَ فَهَلْ يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَّا السَّاعَةَ أَن تَأْتِيَهُمْ بَغْتَ فَقَدْ جَاءَ أَشْرَاطُهَا فَأَنَّا لَهُمْ إِذَا جَاءَتْهُمْ ذِكْرَاهُمْ Surah Muhammad Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Then, do they await except that the hour should come upon them unexpectedly? What are they waiting for? That they will be taken, you know, suddenly? With the hour, the Day of Judgment will be established so suddenly? But, Allah says, but already there have come some of its indications and signs to them. That means, even though we say we're not going to let you know when it's we're going to be established, but we are sending, Allah says that we are sending indications to you. So you have some of these signs. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَنَّ لَهُمْ إِذَا جَاءَتْهُمْ ذِكْرَاهُمْ That means when this happens, the remembrance will not benefit them at all. <coughs> so if those people who believe, but they never worked upon that belief, this remembrance on what happens is not going to benefit him at all. As the Prophet says in the hadith that if the sun, when the sun comes from the west, when the sun rises from the west, that would be it. The sun is there, so those who would like to repent, too late for them. Because now that major sun is there, it's over. So when the sun comes, it's not going to benefit them at all. And to show that it's very close, uh, the Prophet, how close it is actually is going to happen, the Prophet he mentioned that his life and his death and his arrival as the last messenger of Allah is considered one of the signs of the day of judgment, one of the signs of the hour. He said, ana kahadihi wahadihi. The Prophet وسلم, says, I was sent, in this hadith, he said, I was sent, means with the sa'a, means like kind of competing, racing with the sa'a like this. And he showed his two fingers, the, the middle finger and actually the index finger, put them together like this. What does that exactly mean when you point your two fingers like that, in terms of how far are they from each other? They're very close. So whether we're comparing the space between the two fingers or the height of the two fingers. <coughs> either way, if you compare the height, isn't much. It means they're very, very close. And if you compare the space, there isn't even any space. But remember, still the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that 1,500 years ago, comparing that relatively to the actual you know, length of, of, of life on earth. 
And in other narrations, in, in, in uh, Muslim Imam Ahmad rahimahullah ta'ala, Rasulullah says, in karad la tasbiquni, which means the hour is coming so close, so near, it almost started before I was even sent to, the man, to mankind. Almost started. Like he's saying, of course, he's saying like it was almost going to be established, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delaying it until, of course, the last message goes to mankind. What's the significance of these signs for us? And we're going to talk about these signs later, inshallah. But what is the significance of these signs? Signs such as, few of them, for example, intishar uh, uh, al-ilm, meaning that actually the, the widespread of literacy means the knowledge of reading and writing. That's one of the signs of the Day of Judgment, by the way. Also, with the, with the spread of literacy, unfortunately, the quality of knowledge drops down. Now the Prophet ﷺ said that al-ulama yurfa al-ilm al-ulama yurfa'un. Knowledge will be raised, will be removed and taken away from the people. Even though literacy is very common, but few people read. I mean today, we have access to knowledge no one ever dreamed of before. You know the scholars of the past? Wallahi, they will pay everything and anything. They will give the entire world to ha just to have access to 1% of access that we have to knowledge today. Even as I'm speaking to you right now, I can just simply go online and just basically go to one of those websites that has thousands and thousands and thousands of books, articles, discussions, conference you know, uh, uh, releases and all that stuff and so on, just instantly. And if you try to read everything, you need not just a one lifetime, you need tons of lifetimes. So we have so much access to this, to this knowledge that we don't appreciate that, unfortunately. And one of the reasons we don't appreciate that, because it's available. Because, just because it's available. If you have the book, what do you say to yourself? I'll read it, inshallah ta'ala. But when is it going to come? Allah ta'ala alam. SubhanAllah, an incident that happened today, I was visiting uh, you know, uh, an, an office, a medical office, and the doctor over there, and we had a nice conversation, we have a nice relationship together, so he says, you know, you gave me the Qur'an, I gave him actually a copy of the Qur'an a while back. And uh, uh, he said, uh, you know, when you gave it, that was almost last year when I gave it to him, to read it. He says, you know what, I have been, ha I have been contemplating and trying to, to read the, the book, but I never got the chance to read the Qur'an yet. He never got the chance to read the Qur'an at all. And he said until one day, he saw the book again, and he grabbed it. And then he was speaking with his daughter. So uh, his da he told his daughter that, you know, a gentleman gave me this, uh, 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 this book, the Qur'an, but I never got the chance to read it. His daughter told him, you should read it. SubhanAllah, his daughter told him you should read it. And uh, uh, although she's not Muslim, and she said, it's a great book. Subhanallah. He's telling me that. He says, his daughter was telling him, it's a great book. You should read that. He said, I said, why didn't you read it then? He goes, well, I'm going to need to find a time for it. I said, how about we start one page at a time? If you want, I can read that for you even. But I hope, inshallah, will give him the umur and the age that he would get the chance to read the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when we had a discussion that tells you, subhanallah, they're very, very expert in the, in the field that they work in. But when it comes to the Akhirah, as Allah uh, described them, they don't have that knowledge. They have no clue of what's going on. So Alhamdulillah, we have some of this conversation. But the point I want to make is we have the access to the knowledge, but it's completely you know, not so beneficial to us, unfortunately. What is the significance of these signs? Number one, it's a proof for the truthfulness of the Messenger Muhammad I mean, we live in the 21st century. When the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he spoke about one day, one day people will be fighting and will be, will be kind of not fighting, but eventually competing and vying to build the, lo the loftiest and the tallest building on earth. Didn't he say that, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He said that, Salawat Allah wa sallam Have this ever happened before? Never. Today, we are living this. When you go to the Gulf countries, you would see that with your own eyes. You would say, wow, that's exactly what the Prophet was talking about. And it, amazingly, it's happening where? In the closest region where the Prophet ﷺ had spoken about this. He wasn't speaking about America or about China or about you know, all these big buildings over there. He was talking about basically the shepherds, the people of the desert. They will be 
vying to build the loftiest building. So that's one of the, the signs. And the Prophet ﷺ told about this. And we can see the truthfulness of Muhammad wasallam. And some of them, of course, they were from uh, the time of uh, that, the Prophet himself. Like the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum in Allah Azza wa in the Quran. He talked about غُلِبَتُ uh, الرُّومُ فِي الْأَرْضِ That the Romans will be defeated against the Persians. And then eventually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give a, a victory to the Romans against the Persians in few years. So that was like one of those signs. And it happened, predicted to the Prophet ﷺ to prove his truthfulness wasallam. A second reason why, the significance of these signs that we see around, confirmation of faith and belief. You know, we are human beings. We get distracted by the tangible aspects of this world. We are human beings. You go out, you watch TV, you see the world, eventually you get affected, you get the influence of the materialism of this world, really. Spirituality becomes weaker and the desire to think and focus on spirituality starts getting weaker and weaker. Why? Because you are prone to believe in what you see and what you hear instead of what you know about. And that's why it gets really weaker. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every now and then sends us one of those signs just to help us confirm our iman and faith. Just about when the moment you're about to kind of lose your iman and start wondering and even doubting your faith and the, and the truthfulness of Islam and just when about, you know, start thinking about this, suddenly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals one of those signs to you. So when this happens, you would say, wow, subhanAllah, that's amazing. The Prophet said this 1400 years ago and now I could see this. So that kind of confirms iman. Of the, of the individual in a time that is completely troubling for many, many people, Allah Musta'an. In addition to that, we're living in the West over here. And the challenge of culture, the challenge of you know, other faith, the challenge of, you know, of atheism, and all these kind of, of course, you know, uh, ideologies, it's, it's, it's real, it's there. So Alhamdulillah, for those who truly believe when they see these signs and they read about them in the book of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they realize that's a confirmation of faith for them. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the ayah in Surah Al-Ahzab, وَلَمَّا رَأَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الْأَحْزَابَ قَالُوا هَذَا مَا وَعَدَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَصَدَقَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَمَا زَادَهُمْ إِلَّا إِمَانًا وَتَسْلِيمًا And when the believers saw the, 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 the companies, and those are the allies who came against the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam during Al-Ahzab, the battle of the trench, they said, this is what the Sahaba, when they saw that, they knew that the Prophet told them this is going to happen. And it is, indeed, it happened. They said, this is what Allah and His Messenger had promised us, and Allah and His Messenger spoke the truth. Even though it was a difficult time, they were about basically kind of trapped. They were besieged by 10,000 warriors. But that increased their iman, not the opposite. When the pressure of the non-believers was stronger on them, that raised their iman. Today, our youth and our family and people here in, this, in the West, when the pressure on Islam becomes strong, Unfortunately, sometimes because the base of Iman is not strong enough, they run away. But the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, they knew. That's what the Prophet said. He said, he did it. it's not going to be an easy path. It's going to be a very challenging path, and you're going to have to make, actually, the, 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 uh, the, to stay strong on this path. Now, the third one, a reminder for the believers to prepare for it. It's a reminder for the believers to prepare for it. What does that exactly mean? You know? You know that when the Day of Judgment is being established and it's going to happen, you're going to be standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the account. You prepare yourself for that. You prepare yourself for that through what? By what? By good deeds. By salah, by siyam, ta'a, and eventually try to do the right thing and avoid the, the, the wrong thing as much as you can. So you always try to prepare for it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the indications of the Day of Judgment as a road map for us. Road map for us. How is that? When you know that which is right and that which is wrong, Allah Azza is telling you, stay away from this, get ready for something like this. For, instance, for instance, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us that just right before the Day of Judgment is established, uh, Al-Harj will become extremely, extremely common. And what's the meaning of Al-Harj, Jama'ah? Kathratul Qatl, massive killing and massive death. Isn't this what we talk about these days? since the establishment of you know the, the, the machines and the industrial revolution and the use of machines in, in warfare, what happens? It's no longer one on man. It's no longer one on one in the battlefield. No. We're talking about you know weapons of mass destructions. One bomb kills thousands and thousands of people. Today in Syria, Allah Musta'an, people they talk about massacres, not victims. It's not like one, two, three people are being killed. You're talking about 100, 200, 
per bomb. And it seems that people that got desensitized, you know, just can't, don't even feel it anymore. Today in Egypt, even though they're going, you know, supposedly, supposedly, of course, you know, for uh, uh, democratic, you know, change and so on, so whatever they call it, but eventually, people are dying through the process and no one really just kind of paying attention to this because we we'll get used to that. So the Prophet, he mentioned that, and as a result, as a believer, you need to prepare that when the time of the fitna comes, you're going to need to be ready for it. Strengthen your Iman. Avoid the path of fitna. Don't participate in that. There are so many indications regarding these signs of the Day of Judgment. When the Prophet ﷺ is telling us that ilm is going to decrease, what is exactly telling you? That you make sure to prepare, that you learn, be in the path of seeking knowledge. So eventually he's telling us, So the signs of the Day of Judgment are giving us these indications to establish our lives based on this. So when you go to Gulf countries and you see the signs are all around you, what are you going to do? Enjoying them and go all the way up there to have a, a nice meal on, the, on, that, on that restaurant up there. Or just look up and say, Allah al -musta'an. We're almost there. That doesn't mean not to go up, but eventually. The point is that you need to, to make this like a roadmap. Allah is giving you indications to prepare for that. Now, categories of these signs. There are so many signs. And inshallah, this is basically one of the things that we're going to start moving on next week, inshallah, azawajal, is when we talk about the signs of the Day of Judgment, uh, there are two, the ulama, they divide them into two major categories. Number one, the major signs. Major signs, these are the things that will be towards the, almost the, the closest to the establishment of the, of the Day of Judgment. And these are major ones, which means when they happen, they're going to come one after the other. And then we have minor signs. Minor signs are extended. They go basically in different categories. St some of these signs happen and they don't repeat. Like, for example, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu He lived 1500 years ago. He was one of those signs of the Day of Judgment and he passed away. So they're not going to be repeated. Then we have signs that, will, that, that are waiting to happen. Signs are waiting to happen. So things did not actually happen yet. They're still going to come in the future, inshallah ta'ala. Now those signs that happened in the past also come in two categories. Some of them happen and they won't repeat. And others happen and they will, they will continue happening and they will repeat until the actual establishment of the Day of Judgment. And we're going to inshallah mention them in details as we move on forward in this, in this series. The last inshallah slide that we have over here as the, trying to kind of differentiate between major signs and minor signs. How can you make a major, how can you differentiate between major signs and minor signs? The ulama, they say, comparing the major signs to the minor signs, it's basically the minor signs are not, they're usually not, uh, uh, not out of the ordinary. Meaning things, they happen as the progress of time. And sometimes they happen in a time that's considered, you know, relevant to that time. So for instance, what we see in this picture, what we see in this picture, guys, this is actually uh, the tallest building we have so far on Earth, except for the tallest one. The tallest one, you, you guys recognize the tallest one that you see here? This one. No, this one is Burj Khalifa, actually. But the one here, which is the tallest one. So basically, this is Burj Khalifa here, the one in, in, in Dubai. But this is a new one, a new plan. And they call it actually Burj Al Khalij. Burj Al Khalij is going to be built in, uh, in another actually Gulf country, without indicating any. Yani. But eventually, they're, they're kind of competing. So when, when, the, when Dubai announced their building, they immediately announced the, the, the word for them until they put the last yani, portion of it so that they don't change their mind and make it taller. One moment they put that, they announce their plan. And I'm sure that others are actually planning now again uh, over theirs. So eventually the plan is going to keep going up and down. If you, if you remember the slide from before, so this is basically how it really looks. This is Burj Khalifa above the clouds, literally above the clouds, subhanAllah. Imagine the, the other one, how it's going to look like. And you know these buildings, like, they keep swaying, they keep moving with the wind. And imagine. How, how, how scary could that be if, if you can feel this movement, subhanAllah. So these are now one of the signs of the Day of Judgment. So how do we know that? These are now, in our time, these are not out of the ordinary. Yes, it's magnificent, it's beautiful, it's fascinating, it's whoa, but it's not out of the ordinary because, you know, the progress of time and culture makes it easy to accept these things. But the Prophet ﷺ predicted that, and Allah gave him that knowledge that these things will happen. So that 500 years ago, 
they also had some of these signs that was relevant to their time and so on. But then we have the major signs. The major signs usually are out of the ordinary. Like at Dajjal, Ya'juj and Ma'juj, the return of Isa ibn Maryam and so on. Usually actually they are out of, the, uh, out of the ordinary but not necessarily altogether. And as we move on and shall explain these categories, we will see what are the minor signs and what are the major signs. The major, the major signs, the Prophet sallallahu he mentioned 10 of them, salawatullah wa salam alayhi, and he said that when they happen, they're going to happen one after the other. So based on this, we know that none of them happened yet. None of them happened yet, but there's so many of the minor signs that happened and took place. So basically, this is the beginning of the signs, and inshallah, next week when you come back, we will be discussing, inshallah, ta'ala, these signs and uh, starting with the minor signs. Bin Allah Any questions? Yes. Will the minor signs happen uh, all at once or will they be minor signs take place during the major signs? Say it again. Will minor signs all take place and then the major signs begin or, or will some continue during the major signs? Okay, the question here, uh, will the minor signs have to, to complete first before the major signs starts coming uh, out or are they going to be continuous even while the, majors, while, uh, uh, while the major signs are actually coming in? The answer is, is, the, is the latter actually, meaning even though the major signs happening, the minor signs will still continue. So they will still continue. But even new minor signs will also start. Will there be new minor signs? Allahu Ta'ala Alam. Will they be, will they be actually uh, minor signs? Allahu Ta'ala Alam. Nah. Yes. Uh, one of the ayat said that the sa'ah will be heavy on the heavens of the earth. Are there any uh, scholarly things on that? Say it again. It's so heavy in the heavens and the earth. It means its matter, its essence is heavy in the, heaven, in the heavens and the earth. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps its, its knowledge to himself. He wouldn't let this you know, happen. He will keep it to himself because none can carry that, that knowledge and that secret. So it's, it's Allah azza wa only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahu alam. Yes. Is there any time in the Say it again. Any time for the Akhir? What do you mean? No, like, is there a time? Is there a distance of time? In Al-Akhir, like feeling the time itself? Yeah, like time. Okay, so basically, uh, you're talking about Jannah, Jahannam, or talking about the resurrection? Uh, Jannah, Okay, because before that, the question is, is there, if there will be any sense of time on the Day of Judgment? Well, the Prophet ﷺ, when he spoke about the people waiting until Allah Azzawajal judged between them, he said that people will be standing, and he said, for about 500 years. So he mentioned time. And Allah Subh'anaHu Wa mentioned in the Qur'an that يَوْمًا عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ كَأَلْفِ سَنَةً خَمْسِينَ أَلْفَ سَنَةً So it's 1,000, 50,000 years, مِمَّا يُعَدُّونَ of what do you calculate. So that the sense of time is there, but the perception of it is different. Wallahu ta'ala alam. Naam. Sisters, any question? Brothers, yes. In Shakat Saat, when Shakal Kamar? Yeah, we're going to talk about this, inshallah, later. As we start talking about these signs, we're going to explain them one at a time, bin Allah Azza wa So the question was about the ayah, Aqtarabat Saat, when Shakal Kamar, that the Saat is near and the Kamar split in two. Uh, we're going to explain that later, inshallah, in details. Nah. There was a lecture once I was listening to a couple years ago by actually pretty significant scholar, mm -hmm. contemporary scholar, and he mentioned, uh, I don't know if this is the authenticity of the hadith, but he said that our ummah, the Prophet's ummah, would be around half as long as the ummah of, of uh, Sayyidina Musa. In terms of size? Uh, no, uh, in terms of length of period, so I guess that was 2,000 years, but then the Prophet made it a dua to Allah mm. for a certain number of uh, a certain amount of time, and it turned out to be 500 years, so basically we'd be around for 1,500 years. I, I don't know if you've ever come across We're going to come to discuss that, inshallah, as we talk about the actual uh, signs one at a time, inshallah ta'ala. So the, basically the question is about the, the life uh, that Allah will give to this ummah and comparing that to Bani Israel when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was giving the ummah half of what they got, what Bani Israel got, so eventually the Prophet extended that. We're going to, we're going to talk about this, inshallah ta'ala, one at a time. Bidnillah azza wa Naam. Khair, inshallah. The last question. Tawadam.
Oh, you're talking about the actual uh, uh, events of the establishment of the Day of Judgment? Is that what you're saying? Okay. Yeah, so the question is, is it true that the, the, the Muslims or the believers are not going to be suffering from uh, the, the events that will, uh, that will uh, indicate the establishment of the Day of Judgment, the destructions of earth and heavens and so on? The answer is yes, actually. The prophets are not because of what you mentioned, that Isa alayhi salam will take all the believers in a way. That's the rapture according to the Christian yani, uh, uh, definition of it. But uh, Isa alayhi salam himself, he will live on earth and he will continue his life on earth until he dies and he will be buried on earth. That's a promise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran. مِنْهَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ وَفِيهَا نُعِيدُكُمْ وَمِنْهَا نُخْرُجُكُمْ تَارَةً أُخْرَى That from earth we created you, and to earth we'll put you back again, and from earth we'll resurrect you back to us. So that includes everybody, including Isa alayhi salam. So Isa is still there, and he's going to come down, and he will live his life, and then he will be buried here, and sometime later Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will establish a day of judgment. So the, the indication that the believers will not be alive when this happens is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says when the Day of Judgment happens, when the Day of Judgment happens, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, لا تقوم الساعة في الأرض من يقول الله الله means when the Day of Judgment is established, there will be nobody who would say, who would be saying لا إله إلا الله or Allah. Meaning Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala will send that wind to uh, capture the souls of the believers and then uh, those who will stay are شرار الخلق, the worst of the people. So we're going to talk about this, inshallah ta'ala, as one of the last signs of that Day of Judgment. Wallahu ta'ala alam. Khair, inshallah Next week when we come back, we will start with the minor signs, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.